guys, welcome to a new episode of this channel, and let's just take that off because I feel stupid. Let's get this started with Heart of a Samurai, a Newbery Honor book that was given to it in 2010. And this book, before we start, is actually based on true events, so hopefully you guys will recognize the story. Some of you guys will recognize the story, so let's get this started with Heart of a samurai based on the true story of a guy named uh manhiro nakahama by marg by margi prius this book this video is going to be split into four parts uh, the introduction we already did that already then we will also be talking about the plot very quick plot then why you should read with a quick review and then the conclusion get this started with right now and i am going to be a ninja again The thing, there's this guy named uh, Manjiro. We already told his name already in the true story part of this book, of this video. And he is 14 years old in actual real life and in this book when he was stranded and sea with four other friends. And by friends, I do not mean like, like close friends. I mean like partners who were smashed together and forced to work together just to get food. In this case, fish. And possibly it'll be added to some rice. They f it's 1841 and they find themselves they are deserted and stranded on a deserted island after a storm at sea. However, beyond this island, which they decided to call Bird Island, here is Bird Island, actually an actual drawing by Mr. Manjiro himself, who was later rescued by a... Uh, some people that they've been told were demons with blue eyes, hairy faces, chubby faces, weird noses, weird hair, spiky hairs, colors, and very disrespectful traditions. You got that? And they are barbarians, you little children. So, go to bed, or the barbarians will get you. Ah, yeah, that, that, that's like, go to bed, or the bed bugs will bite you. Ah, like that kind of story or something. I mean, barbarians don't exist and the only barbarians around today are those people who decide to be wild i'm basically talking about pirates here and that's what they find beyond this island is actually lots of monsters and demons and barbarians as they are told but they were rescued by these barbarians and they had no idea what to do with them they're called manjiro john mung who actually started learning english pretty fast and they cannot return to their home japan because it's their waters are actually closed their borders are closed and then one day an american whaling vessel passes by and it rescues them they become friends manjiro becomes friends with the captain and manjiro after living 10 years six of them on the sea four of them in america goes to places that he never ever dreamed he would visit or even existed as i mentioned already like america this boy, Manjiro, was the first Japanese person to actually set foot on America. So he's called the boy who discovered America! Not America Vespucci, but Manjiro discovered America! At least, discovered America for the Japanese. He discovered so many other wonderful inventions, and he actually enjoyed lots of it. He spread his, he told his culture to other people, and they seemed to like it too. And the crazy thing is, there's pretty much no thing that could get over there. He knows it is impossible for a simple fisherman to have this rank. If you're born a fisherman, your sons, grandsons, 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 grand, great, grand, great, great, grandsons, all will be fishermen. It has been the way. Your whole family has been fishermen for generations. Now, your family for every generation has been samurai, so you will always be samurai. Now, you noble, every generation from you noble will always be noble. You, sir, peasants, every children you bear will become peasants. Except you, Manjiro, you are allowed to be a samurai. Oh, make this one exception. Protest, protest, this is a change, we hate change! And like, all of that seems to happen for Japan, and it seems to be that that is kind of a weird thing. Change is kind of too fast for them. You get to change lots of things. Respect is just one thing that, well, Manjiro had to learn. Or now should I call him John Mung? John Mung seemed to learn almost nothing. And Manjiro needs time to actually 
expect here. What we learn from this book is that there is lots of changes in the world. Now let's go into the why you should read this book. This book should be read for a number of reasons. One, it's a biographical sketch. I personally like biographies and I personally like historical fiction. So if you like historical fiction, that's actually based on real facts. Actually, mostly based on real facts. And this book is just right for you. Eee! Second of all, the thing is this book also teaches us about the racisms of the world. This well, John Mung had to deal with lots of racism just because he was Japanese, and he was able to pass through all of it, and he was able to surpass his enemies. Lots of enemies he's made, but he's still decided to perspire, perspire and do lots of great things. He changed the world. When Commodore Matthew Perry, no, not the guy who, sung, who like, the friends guy, like, no, not that guy, Matthew Perry, the guy who unisolated, unisolated Japan. John Mung, who was in America and had first-hand experience of what they even did, he literally just went there and told these guys, look, the Americans don't want to conquer us. They're too busy They're too busy improving their own country. They just want trade and a place to restock and refuel things. That's all they wanted. And so what happened next is that John Mung decided that he would be an ambassador and he helped the shogun and other lords he was one of the people who argued that japan should start expanding and open its borders again although he was never allowed to directly communicate with his well with the americans he was finally able to go on an embassy trip in new york and this is what happened he was able to meet captain and mrs woodfield again yeah well that that seems nice doesn't it The last, ex the last reason why you should read this book is that this also teaches you one thing. Even small subtle changes can change the world. Now, uh, I'll give you an example. Let's take a lake, and let's say you want to skip pebbles along it. However, you miss, and the pebble drops down. However, if you did peb if you did pebble skipping, then it would probably take four ripples. It would probably create four ripples, but even just one ripple, one small ripple can turn into a gigantic ripple which can eventually touch everything that is in the lake. And that will eventually change the whole lake itself. The lake will never quite be the same ever again. It'll never quite be that same again. The only thing that seems to work here to actually change it back is that there is nothing to change it back. Small changes, like that pebble making that small ripple, will turn into a gigantic impact. Like that ripple turning into a gigantic ripple, touching everything in the lake until it calms down again. But that lake will never quite be the same again. So that's that. That's about it. And one more thing before I go is the conclusion. This book teaches us lots of things. The life about Mandriro. Small changes becoming big changes. We're all equals. Just because you're born into someone, to a fisherman, doesn't mean you have to be a fisherman. You can go to an elevated rank. And that you belong home. You don't need to travel the world to try to find a home to actually realize that you just have to go back to the start. You don't need to travel the world to find that out. All you just need to do is look into your heart as deep as possible. Home sweet home, as they say. You should know that already. Look into your heart and see what you really want. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Hanshin Show, and I will see you guys in my next episode. And that is it. Shalom out. Peace. <laughs> I think I finally got it right by now. Bye.